Tuesday, July 5th, 2022. Today on the Daily Review, we discuss a classic Indian film from 2004 called Swades or We the People. With your host, me, Professor Joe LaRocca. This is a movie directed by, uh, um, who is this? Ashutosh Gowerki. Um, I forgot his name there for a second. He directed Lagan, another epic movie that I've seen, but before I started reviewing movies a long time ago in college, it's a big epic kind of anti-colonization cricket movie. And uh, I thought it was awesome, but I, I also, like, I found it very powerful, but, uh, like, I don't, I still don't really fully understand cricket. <laughs> it's like, that's a, that's a tough one to get my head around. Um, anyway, okay, this is a beautiful movie. It stars Shah Rukh Khan and uh, 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 Gayatri, or is it, yeah, it's Gayatri Joshi, um, who was, plays Gita, and Shah Rukh Khan plays, um, I'm just trying to get all the names out of the way, because I'm so bad at them, and Mohan. And it's a great story, epic, over three hours of... Uh, a very successful NASA um, like project manager who goes to back to India where he grew up to find essentially his nanny, like a woman who helped take basically raise him. And his plan is to bring her home, to bring her home, to hit back to his home, back to India and I mean excuse me back to the United States and like care for her and give her a good life and all sorts of stuff like that so he goes there with a bit of pretension like America is better I'm gonna save her and bring her back because she needs saving kind of thing and of course he falls in love with Gita and it's a beautiful love story and also a really important and interesting discussion the film itself is kind of a discussion about the pros and cons of culture and tradition and government and society and class and race. It's got like so – that's why this needs to be long. This is – you know, I know I often complain about the length of movies, not just Indian movies. Go back. Even two years ago, I always go, this movie's too long. I always kind of feel like movies outstay their welcome. Now, this is a movie that needs to be long because you need to feel the change uh, that Mohan goes through, and you do feel that change, which is impressive because you know what the change is going to be within like 20 minutes of the movie. You're like, yeah, he's going to go there and learn that this is not a spoiler, but you know, he's going to be like, oh, the, my roots, I have a stronger connection with my roots, and things here are actually, I, I have a more soulful connection to these things than I do uh, to my life in America. <clears throat> and uh, the thing is, is that. They deal with it in such an intelligent and, like, smartly plotted out way with very, like, good conversations between characters. That's what I mean. The movie itself is a conversation, but, like, people sit down and have these conversations, so they address the possible criticisms that it's like, oh, an American comes and saves this Indian village, which is totally an angle you could take, um to try and like not take this movie down, but you, that would not be very smart of you because the movie does a very good job of showing how that's not at all his reasoning and his transformation is um, a part of his growth and it's not him, although there are aspects of like India versus the United States in terms of culture and stuff like that, it's more of a, conversation I don't know am I saying it right suede's um <laughs> it's like um see this is the th the point is that I can't even discuss it properly you need a three and a half hour movie but it it's not like I don't know in the same way that when we, we get to it when we, the white white shadow doesn't placate the audience and addresses the idea that it seems like a story about a white knight, you know, like, oh, a white guy goes into the ghetto and saves all these kids. Like, it's not that. It's it's more, um, you know, there's more details to that. And th although you know within 20 minutes, oh, this is going to be a love story where love wins out and he's going to learn all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter that you know that, you know what I mean? Because it's all the little details and how they 
essentially convince you, like, I genuinely believe in the change that Mohan goes through. And that's weird for me because it's a very positive. <laughs> like, I usually don't think, and I believe that this could really happen to a real person. That's what I mean. Like, when I, when I watched this, I was like, this is satisfying in terms of storytelling, but it's also, I could imagine this exact thing happening. That's how convincing it is. Like, somebody from America who's got this cushy life, in a sense, even though his job is nutty and stuff, like, he, he's achieved a great deal, and, he, you know, he's got all luxuries and comforts, but, <clears throat> excuse me, not uh, having any, a relationship with anybody and, like, not feeling really a strong connection to anything besides his work. Um going back and spending five weeks in India where he grew up and reconnecting with all these things and falling in love. Like, I totally could believe it, you know? It didn't feel like, um, you know, like a movie, <laughs> even though it's, compl it's extremely positive and full of magic, which is not how I think about the world. So usually when I see a movie like this, like a positive kind of romance, I go, yeah, but that's bullshit you know just because i'm so negative but in this like it was so masterfully done that i was convinced i was like I, i'm convinced of his love and i'm convinced of his change and like is a movie about good over evil in a sense like it but it, or those types of themes of like you know um what's the right road to choose and all this kind of thing and, and like but without would not a drop of irony you know and uh i thought it was great i thought when he has to go to collect the money, um, that whole sequence is amazing. We have to kind of like travel, do a little tour of India. But the best scene for me is the traveling movie theater scene where they bring a movie into town and the, the kind of classes are divided um, where, because the way it's projected, it, you can sit on both sides of the screen. Um, but if you're on one side of the screen, obviously everything's in reverse. And so uh, the lower class people have to sit on that side and and... Uh, it's just brilliant the discussion of that, and they lose power, and he, he they bring the they he he starts talking about the stars and teaching them, and they do this song, this star, that star, every star, and it's awesome, and all the little kids are dancing and singing, it's fucking adorable, and uh, powerful. Like I had a tear in my eye because it's it's about like you know breaking down barriers, which is always a good thing, but it's also like I just liked the, how moved people were by both the cinema, which is my number one passion, and the education, you know, how like watching a teacher engage with students and have them learning and, and, and connecting with everything like that's, you know, that doesn't happen very often in my class. <laughs> it's mostly kids just kind of looking at their phones. But, you know, uh, I'm just kidding. But, you know, like that's my other passion is ha so it was like the two things I love the most is like seeing people enjoying learning something and and and. and movies are fun you know? <laughs> and they're like such a good art form and they bring everybody together no matter your class your race or anything like that and so this movie discusses a lot of potentially problematic i don't know i don't know how to say it but it's just it's really well done and i didn't feel like it was pandering to either americans or indians even with the decision that it comes up with um and the climax and the ending it's great it's got pretty much all you want in a movie um and even though it's structured like a movie and all that good stuff, it still feels um, like it's possible. It, like, you know, <laughs> like it's what a romance is supposed to do, like make you uh, genuinely believe in uh, like love and connections and stuff like that. Um, and there's a lot of really good details about how, how, how he's Americanized and will like only sleep in his RV and he's smoking Marlboro cigarettes and only drinks out of water. And then they'll slowly stick to get to get to get change as he gets back. What was that bird? Did you? What's that bird? Let's see, listen for a second. It's like, man. Okay. Anyway. Uh, oh, last thing I'll say. Uh, the song that uh, uh, Gita sings, her first song, "Oh My Love, This Heart Is in Turmoil." That whole thing. I don't know the name of the song. That is totally like. I feel like Radiohead ripped that song off. That feels like if you just change the instrumentation slightly. That song is such a Radiohead song. The lyrics and the the drum. The I was like, "Holy crap! This is the this is a this is a progressive song." I guarantee, I absolutely guarantee, Tom York saw this movie and was like, "Oh, I'm gonna do that." <laughs> I'm not calling. It's not plagiarism. I'm just saying he was influenced. I know it, and definitely Wes Anderson saw this because because of uh, you can see 
there's some train shots that feel like um, Wes Anderson kind of borrowed. He did a lot of borrowing for Darjeeling, you know, but it was an homage, not a not a steal in my opinion. But you know, it's been discussed on the channel before anyway. Well, um, so basically, yeah. Ultimately, the movie really is ultimately. I mean, it's about patriotism and it's about. Um, you know, finding your home and your place and how, like, how can you be the best person for the most people, not just for yourself? Um, in that sense, it's, it's got like a religious vibe to it, but it's basically like w once you're healthy and have shelter, the most important thing is education, you know, and that's what he feels he can bring because he's had the, it, all these advantages. And so he's not coming back being like, I'm better than you. He's just like, I can take what I've learned to like help everybody here so that they can help themselves you know teach a man to fish uh i mean give a man a fish he eats a fish teach a man to fish and he'll start a business and destroy the oceans all right time to grade this <laughs> um i gotta give it a very 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 solid a minus getting close to an a uh, one or two little cheese things that kind of knocked it down a tiny bit, but and a little, a few little dated things in my opinion. Just and some of the musical, like the some of the score, the techno score, I think doesn't really uh, makes it feel like a like a late '90s kind of movie. Just, just tiny little things, but um, really impressed by this movie once again. And uh, I'm gonna go look for. I gotta watch a few more Shah Rukh Khan movies because also, not, like after watching that, his, some interviews with him, I, yeah, his career's had like ups and downs, I guess, right? So he's like a Robert Downey Jr. maybe, somebody like that. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong about that, or like who would you compare him to? I think on that interview they were like he's the, he's like Tom Cruise, I guess. He's like the Indian Tom Cruise, but um, I think he's a he's a better actor than Tom Cruise. He might not be, <laughs> he might not have um, Tom Cruise's insanity <laughs> to like hang off a helicopter but certainly seems like a better actor but i don't know i haven't seen enough anyway like and subscribe if you like to subscribe i'm here every single day and you can be here as much as you want uh let me know what you think about this movie in the comments if you feel like attacking me or saying that i'm wrong or that i shouldn't watch international films then i say you should watch this movie again and maybe learn a little bit from it because it's all that's all I'm trying to do here. I will talk to you a uh, domani, which is broken kind of Italian for tomorrow, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Education, yeah. Sweet.